Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So what do you guys think? Are we going to break the Valhalla gate, get over $3.30 per XRP? This is an analysis from Agrag Crypto. He says, but first, we are in a mini descending channel, so we have to be prepared for this, guys. In the short term, the descending channel is a bearish trend that is characterized by a series of lower highs and lower lows. We might be in a uh, mini descending channel and bearish uh, for the short term, but the grand schema is still intact. Nothing to worry about. So what he's looking at here, guys, the descending bearish channel, something that we've talked about in the past, the fact that XRP on the micro time frame here is in fact making those lower lows and those lower highs. And, uh, you know, I brought up that fractal pattern from back in 2017, demonstrating that we could in fact go as low as what, 31 cents down and around here somewhere touching these levels of support this is very strong support by the way at this moment so you know even if we do see that mini descending channel as per igreg crypto that would in fact be the launching off point before we move to higher highs then he says the descending channel breakout we would move to 55 cents the breakout downside so he's just giving us the numbers here the breakout downside would be at around 31 cents 31.3 xrp army he says stay steady and keep on down cost averaging because i'm sure of two things in life all of us will die one day and everyone will say, I wish I bought more XRP. Bringing us to this latest tweet though from him, XRP is in a risk to reward ratio of one to 10 based on Raul Pal, and the chart is presenting evidential data to support his opinion. In the meantime, XRP has to break the structure around 67 cents and breaking the Valhalla gate around $3.30. So um, ultimately what he's looking at here, let me bring up that 67 cent level and uh, just to kind of get a sense of what he's talking about here. So this is where XRP would in fact hit 67 cents. Uh, so let me just put a price label up there, 67 cents, give or take. Uh, let me get rid of some of this. Okay, so I mean, if we do finally go back down to this 31 cent level, touch that, then move to the upside, 67 cents is this next level before breaking the Valhalla gate. 67 is important for a few reasons here. Former resistance, as we saw, and I mean, this goes way back to 2018, uh, again in 2020, we did hit it again up here. And then we were keeping above the neckline up here in 2021. So that was where we did double bounce and where we did form some resistance up there. After 2022, we came back down past 67 cents and we're just kind of trudging down and around here. So, I mean, if we can get back above that level, that would be good for so many reasons. And then the Valhalla gate, guys, he brings it up in this chart here. Break the Valhalla gate. That is ultimately where we saw all time high for XRP back in 20, early 2018. Uh, some of us are still around since that point in time. Uh, you know, a lot of us have been waiting for us to break those numbers yet again. But there is some method to his madness. And, uh, you know, it's all going to be a time game. Part of it is going to be the, uh, you know, the verdict from the SEC. Part of it is going to be how Bitcoin reacts. Bitcoin right now uh, in the 26,000. So Bitcoin right now trading at 26,300 in Bitcoin has not been seeing uh, some very positive days. It's been going down in price. Trend has been going down. I mean, I've even said even if it does hit 25 125, you know, in and around this level here, we are still actually touching former support for Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, it is looking like the market is uh, turning a little bit, but this is, uh, you know, typical. This is par for the course for cryptocurrency, as I like to say. The sentiment isn't really that positive right now. Uh, I mean, if we're going on a week by week basis, Bitcoin Magazine just came out with this article. A judge rules that BlockFi users gave up their legal rights to their BTC by using the platform and all the 300 million of crypto deposits are now property of BlockFi. So guys, if you're using Block, I mean, I, I feel like I keep saying this at least once every few weeks or so, maybe even more than that. Be careful, guys, because I feel like at this point, now that Coinbase has been sued in the United States, and I'm talking for American users specifically, it is very precarious out there. There are very few... Um avenues where you can trade your crypto that you know that you can feel confident that your crypto will be safe now even blockfi now even blockfi has been hit with this so again it doesn't really matter at this point where you trade your crypto be safe don't ever keep your cryptocurrency on the exchange keep it on a cold storage solution like a ledger nano or something similar i do have an affiliate link in the description uh but that's not the point you can use my link if you want you don't have to use it the point is make sure you keep your crypto safe now more than ever uh you know is this 
very important, you know, going through these teething pains, going through this regulatory environment where the government really wants to hammer down on us and, uh, you know, wants to, but basically wants to prevent us from getting rich. So um, this is what's happening with BlockFi, their customers who tried to claim nearly 300 million in crypto after the company froze transfers last year, don't have a right to the digital assets, a judge ruled, handing potential losses to investors who held interest-bearing accounts. U.S. bankruptcy judge Michael Kaplan uh, sided with the company and dismissed the objections of a group of uh, customers who argued they retained rights to the coins even before they were moved into a secure digital wallet. Those who kept their assets in interest-bearing accounts gave up certain ownership rights, while those in custodial accounts did not. I will link this in the description if you want to read the details, but ultimately, guys, not your keys, not your crypto, and, uh, you know, judges can decide whatever they want, whether it makes sense, whether it's fair or not. This is why you've got to be out for yourself, and this is why you should probably, if you have not already, invest in a Ledger Nano or something similar. I should probably start giving some of these things away very, very soon, and uh, I've got a couple kicking around my home office here, so I don't know, put it down in the comments if you guys uh, want a giveaway to happen at some point. I think we need a goal, though. Anyway, let's keep moving along, guys. Christine Lagarde was recently in Japan. Listen to what she said about crypto regulations. Just speaking of the crypto climate, not just in the U.S., listen to this. I'm here in Niiga Niigata in Japan on the occasion of the G7 meeting. Now, I'm holding these beautiful peonies grown by the Japanese farmers around here. Now, this is the lovely time of the trip. Then after that, it's going to be two days of non-stop meetings. And we will be discussing anything like CBDC, uh, regulation of cryptos, financial stability, of course, the macroeconomic environment. And it's a good occasion for me to discuss with other colleagues, to compare notes and to see how we can make the world a little bit more stable and reach this price stability that we very much want to arrive at in short order. So price stability, arrive at that in short order, talking specifically about central bank digital currencies and uh, other cryptocurrencies. Reach price stability, we want it in short order. That means, guys, translation, they are working on this fast and furiously, and, uh, you know, they do not want to make any missteps. They want to make sure that they have a handle on it, and they also want to make sure that we don't have a way to really uh, exploit any kind of vulnerabilities in their plan. So they're really working hard. I mean, the crypto world has just been out of control in their eyes. I mean, for us, it's been great. This is why you and I, we have to be able to protect ourselves. Uh, Mr. Hubert here also bringing up a good point about Brad Garlinghouse. Uh, an interesting point, actually. Brad is taking far too many risks for a potentially unsafe verdict to matter. Now, just the other day, I talked a little bit about Brad and his uh, most recent prediction. Two to six months, Brad Garlinghouse was saying. The crypto meme guy was picking up on this, retweeting out Cowboy Crypto's tweet here. The good news is that we are at the end of the journey, and while others in the crypto industry might be at the beginning of that journey, the silver lining for Ripple has been that we're kind of at the end. Uh, sometime, I would say, between the next uh, two and six months. Now, Brad Garlinghouse recently did just say this at the Dubai Fintech Summit, so that just happened uh, this past week, May, June, July. So he's saying maybe by the summer we'll see something at earliest. And if we were to look at the latest prediction there, six months from May would bring us into uh, November, roughly November 2023. The crypto meme guy saying this, the statement that others uh, are at the beginning of the journey tells me that there will be a settlement that is beneficial to Ripple and hopefully XRP, but not for every other crypto. I guess they should have joined in the fight sooner instead of assuming the free pass didn't expire. But Mr. Hubert here being a little critical, Brad is taking far too many risks for a potentially unsafe verdict to matter. His back and forth is amazing. Why name any dates at all? I asked in 21. Uh, uh, he said it would, uh, he said it would, uh, excuse me, he said it would end at the end of quarter one, 2022. Why would he do this? Two months ago, he said in June. Now he's saying the end of quarter three. He gains nothing except the loss of his credibility. I mean, maybe there's more information coming out. Maybe he's getting new information from his lawyers. I mean, this is an ever evolving uh, you know, story. So we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. I would, uh, I would still be very surprised if we could actually see the Hinman emails someday. So XRP crypto Quebec out here saying Brad is not the one in control. The controlled demolition of the entire worldwide legacy financial system is being dismantled. The USA is a big part of this new quantum financial system and requires he and judge Torres 
follow the script. So XRP Crypto Quebec, uh, he clearly has an opinion on this far-reaching uh, systemic event that uh, is playing out behind the scenes. Interesting comment, considering we also got news from Symposium 2023, guys. This brought to us by Subjective Views here on Twitter. Ripple will be the only crypto blockchain company with clarity in the U.S. And guess who knew all along? Charles Hoskinson. I don't know if you guys remember when uh, Charles was uh, putting out some cryptic tweets. Uh, or was it a tweet or was it even maybe a video that he did of himself, uh, you know, discussing the Ripple lawsuit, saying it could have negative effects for the entire cryptocurrency industry if Ripple is the only crypto company that gets clarity. Well, guys, listen to what Susan Friedman had to say at Symposium 2023. Who should be doing the regulating? Um, I mean, we do we want a patchwork of a combination of the, the courts, of uh, statutory regulators, of industry associations, or should we go the other way and say, no, we're going to create the, uh, the crypto regulation agency, the, C, the, C, the CRA? Susan, let's start with you. I just, I will go ahead and say that having the courts create the standard in the first instance is probably the worst outcome that we can have. It's, it's not what? what we want. Why is that? Because we have elected bodies, we have regulatory agencies, they are the ones, and in the U.S. we have a very well-defined processes um, for promulgating regulations where the public can weigh in. For Congress, there's also big opportunity for public engagement in order to, to make concerns known. For the courts to come in and decide, I, to a certain extent, it represents a failure of, of work being done elsewhere. And the result is, one, including in our case, it's very possible that the judge could issue a decision that only applies to Ripple. And therefore, it won't be clear. There will be many other companies who are stuck in the same regulatory, ambiguous state that they are today. The second is it doesn't allow for public engagement. And, and the best rulemaking, legislative or regulatory process involves that, that public output, not just from industry, but from academics, from consumers, to really have all parties weighing in, voicing their concerns to get to the best outcome possible. You just miss all of that when you have to go through the courts to reach, reach an outcome, which again, just may not even solve the problem that affects industry. So in a nutshell, going through the courts really is not the solution. It could create a problem for the rest of the industry, uh, albeit those holding XRP would be in good shape, at least according to the opinion from this video. I don't know, what do you guys think? I mean, if XRP gets that clarity, we definitely, I think, would have a good shot of breaking that Valhalla gate. I mean, we've done it in a pure speculative market, of course. You know, um, conditions were very different at this point in time. But think of that for a second. Think of all these cryptocurrencies, over 24,000 cryptocurrencies uh, that, you know, would not have the clarity that XRP does. And uh, I mean, if you think about it, the verdict comes in, XRP gets clarity. It is uh, currently right now in number six spot. But, uh, you know, if you take away the uh, stable coins here, Tether and USDC coin, it's really in the number four spot under BNB coin. So it would certainly make it to number three, I have no doubt. What are the chances, though, of it going up above Ethereum and Bitcoin? You know, even in the short term. The other thing is, you know, considering we've talked a lot about diversifying and, uh, you know, the other coins in our portfolios, what would that mean for other coins? I know, you know, a lot of my portfolio, uh, most of my portfolio are coins that do solve problems. I do hold uh, small positions in some other things, but mostly like 95% of the coins that I own, cryptocurrencies, that definitely will solve a problem. So, you know, um, I mean, I guess if you guys are in the same boat, maybe you would feel more or less confident. Tell me down in the comments what you guys are thinking. Uh, if we do see something like this occur where XRP gets the clarity, but other coins may get wrecked. I mean, ultimately on the surface, and I've always said this is, uh, you know, that would be great for XRP hodlers. But, you know, then I'm thinking of the other potentially negative ramifications that, uh, you know, she's mentioning here. The fact that we would still be in a circumstance where the SEC has a lot of control over the industry and, uh, you know, it really still doesn't change anything for the rest of the industry. XRP would get that clarity but in what kind of capacity. So there's those questions as well. Definitely all things that we should consider. The ISL GOAT here bringing this up now. This is a video clip. XRP and liquidity was mentioned once again together. I really wish I had a timestamp on this. Nevertheless, listen to what the speaker has to say here, guys. And the final um, two components of this 
One is liquidity, and this is where blockchain comes in. This is where the cryptocurrency XRP really comes into its own. We use it to create global liquidity for our payment flows. And with that, we create much more um, velocity with payment flows globally. So that's how that vision picks together. And finally, we want to make this technology very easily accessible. So we've developed API technology, such that whether a bank is running Ripple um, in-house or whether, let's say, a corporate is using Ripple via uh, a hosted service, the API is there to encapsulate Ripple processing and make the whole experience very easy to access and use. So that's our stack. And the, again, the message here is there's a lot more going on here than pure blockchain. So blockchain thinking and cryptocurrency thinking occurs throughout the stack. We've applied the knowledge we have and the experience we have very, very broadly to the entire um, portfolio of things you have to do to make a payment network work, including creating our own protocol, including using our cryptography for messaging, and also bringing our cryptocurrency into the liquidity piece. And we've also got away from blockchain completely in some ways in creating governance structures and rule sets within which um, companies, organizations can communicate with, e with each other. And that's what we're bringing out to market now. And that's why one of the reasons why we're getting very good traction worldwide, because we have a complete set that's really ready for prime time versus experiments and uh, um, you know, small components, which one day could be something. So, boom, utilizing RippleNet technology, uh, you know, talking about the liquidity, governance, the rule sets, the messaging, uh, and the settlement infrastructure, all in a nice and tidy stack that they can roll out right away. They're saying, you know, this is not a pilot, this is not a test, this is not a trial run. One interface for payments across any network. Ripple, XRP, and guys, even take a look at some of these examples here that would benefit from Ripple and XRP utilizing Amazon, Uber, uh, or Seagate. So I thought this was a great clip. Not sure how old it is. And I don't know if you guys heard the speaker say this in this clip. Uh, he says, and there is where the cryptocurrency XRP comes into its own. We use it to create global liquidity for our payment flows. And with that, we create more velocity. So in terms of leveraging XRP, payment flows, velocity, utilizing XRP for liquidity, again, guys, central to providing liquidity. Again, I was looking, uh, you know, try digging around, seeing where this was from. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught this down here. It says that this, uh, this uh, slideshow was confidential. I was actually looking at the layout of this slide here, trying to figure out, you know, trying to timestamp it or whatnot. If you guys have any idea, please do put it down in the comment section. I did some research and I found this from Digital Strategies, Tuck at Dartmouth uh, here from about four years ago. This was a presentation, The Ripple Effect on Cryptocurrencies from the Center of Digital Strategies. And if you guys take a look at this PowerPoint layout, uh, you guys can see the layout looks very, very similar with the big uh, number here in gray and the title uh, over top of that. The layout looks very, very similar to what we saw back from this center for digital strategy. So I don't know if they're connected in any way. Again, please do put it down in the comment section if you have an idea. Wanted to thank the ISO GOAT here and everybody else who did contribute here. So how close are we guys to breaking that Valhalla gate? I know 67 cents is the first step and we are getting up there. I know the market is a little bit depressed right now and I know you guys are probably seeing it reflected in your portfolios. But guys, it is all short-term pain for long-term gain. That's just my opinion. I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.